All right, everyone, now we're back to Virginia. We have to talk about this. Trump, first and foremost, immediately holding a rally in Virginia after the debate, totally hamming it up. He took a victory lap. He knows that he won the debate. And he was talking about, you know, Joe Biden being haggard and not really apparently knowing who he was at certain times, which is fundamentally true. So uh, he's having, he had a big rally in Virginia and uh, was hamming it up and, and, you know, he deserves that. Uh, it was very lopsided. But the other thing is that you do have a snap poll in Virginia as well. And this is partially post-debate. And it shows that Donald Trump is now slightly ahead in the state of Virginia. In fact, between Virginia and Michigan, uh, with the polling there and one general poll, along with the snap polls, it looks like Trump has pulled a point or two off of Biden, and that's basically game, set, match. If you're already leading within the margin of error, but then you add like one point to the lead that Trump has, like let's say he rises one point in the aggregate in the competitive states. He's now officially untouchable in Georgia, North Carolina, and Nevada. That gets you pretty close right there. He's now 50-50 in Minnesota, slightly ahead in Virginia. We're not sure about Maine or New Hampshire. We don't have any good polling for them, but I suspect that those will be close as well. Uh, where are the electoral votes for Biden to pick up to be able to win the election? You'll probably get Arizona, because Arizona has Maricopa County. And you're definitely competitive in Wisconsin and Michigan. And Pennsylvania, eh, it leans slightly towards Trump, but it's competitive. But Trump only needs one more state, especially if it's Pennsylvania. There's a lot of electoral votes there. I think they're the fifth, uh, fifth largest in, in the United States for electoral votes. Because California, New York, Texas, Florida, and then Pennsylvania? I think that's the order that it goes in, but it changes over time. So you're never quite sure. Uh, he's taking a huge victory lap right now because he knows, even though his performance was, his, his presidential debate performance was better than normal for Donald Trump, but it would still be within the median. It would be within the average range for presidential debates. It wasn't a JFK moment, uh, but it would be similar. It would be like Ronald Reagan when he was up against Mondale. You know, Mondale uh, got flummoxed a few times. Of course, uh, there was one quip that Reagan made at that debate in 84 when he was running for re-election. And this is one of the funniest moments in debate history, actually, because his opponent actually <laughs> was laughing his ass off. Uh, he was asked about his age, because, of course, at the time, Ronald Reagan was the oldest person to, uh, to seek office. Now it's Joe Biden and Donald Trump a close second. And uh, he was asked, uh, do you think that, uh, there, that there is any concern about your age? Uh, what do you have to say about that? And then he said, uh, I believe, uh, what was the exact quote? Uh, that he wouldn't make an issue out of his opponent's youth and inexperience, <laughs> basically. I like presidential debates. You may have noticed lately. Uh, Virginia is a good place, by the way, to park your ass right after you win a major debate um, because it is, in, it is now a swing state. Uh, Virginia will be competitive, I believe, in this election. In the end, uh, right now, if the election were held today, I would expect Trump to narrowly win it, actually, um, solidifying his hold in the South, basically, um, because Georgia and North Carolina are officially off the table at this point. Again, uh, barring some major sea change, and we just saw one, you know, with this debate, we, we saw a major change, but it wasn't in Biden's favor. Barring a major shift in the other direction because of some inexplicable circumstance, like, you know, Trump literally having a stroke on stage or something like that. Virginia, I believe, is now advantage Trump. Minnesota still leans Biden, but it's doable. Uh, again, we're not sure about Maine or, or New Hampshire. One thing I think that Trump is doing that is actually a poor idea is fixating on, like, New Mexico and New Jersey and states like that. Minnesota, go for it. Virginia, absolutely. Uh, according to the latest polling, you should definitely campaign even harder there because if you pick that up, you've won the election. I wouldn't bother with New Mexico or New Jersey, though. Are they? Is it possible? Yes, kind of, sort of. But again, New Jersey leans about 10 points blue. New Mexico is even more blue than that, I think. They've, they've become one of the bluest states. Uh, and you're kind of wasting your time. But Virginia? Yes, absolutely. If I were Donald Trump over the coming month or so, as the, uh, the glow from the debate victory continues to backlight you, 
I would roll into Virginia and I'd hit up every goddamn county seat and just go on a whirlwind tour there. And then I would immediately pivot back to going into Pennsylvania and especially Nevada. Those are two uh, important pickups. And if he can get them, basically, again, that's the election. He gets over 270. He becomes, you know, the second president in U.S. history to have two non-consecutive terms. A stunning rebuke of Joe Biden. A huge rebuke of Bidenomics. Arguably a rebuke of globalism in general. And it will, it's going to be, uh, it'll launch a thousand memes. I mean, it'll be hilarious too. It'll be good for people like myself that do political commentary. Because once Trump is also president again, again, we've got one additional gift that we get if he's re-elected. All of a sudden, because now he is a public official, he can ignore his contractual obligations with Truth Social, get back on Twitter, and make Barney Frank memes. And he probably will. I, I suspect that he would do so. It's a huge victory lap, though. And he deserves it. I mean, this is, again, they polled CNN's audience right after the debate. And what was the result? It was 67% of people thought Trump won the debate. This was the CNN viewing audience. Um, CNN ain't exactly a non-lopsided network in favor of the Democrats. True, a lot more people are going to view it that liked Donald Trump because he happens to be there, but it should not be that far apart. It, Biden should not be at 33% in that poll. Uh, not by a long shot. I would have expected 60-40. Uh, that, would, that would, by the way, be a huge margin in and of itself. It was much larger than that, and it was a... Uh, actually insane at the time. I couldn't believe what the fuck I was watching. I don't think that Trump could either. His victory lap makes sense. Hold more rallies in Virginia. Go to Norfolk, go to Richmond, go to the, the outer belt of D.C. Go to the D.C. suburbs and hold a rally there. Uh, they haven't seen a Republican candidate, I think, in a while. So go to some of these communities that time forgot and grab up a bunch of people. Uh, don't overdo it, though. Uh, it, you, there is too much of a good thing. If you hypersaturate the state, then you're just wasting uh, effort and money. Have Vivek go there. He's a good speaker. Have Rand Paul go there. He hasn't officially endorsed Trump yet, but I suspect that after this debate performance, uh, it's, it's only a matter of time. That's about all. Peace out.